Assalamualaikum. Today I'll talk about regulation of complement system activation. In previous video, I have talked about the free pathway of complement system activation. The complement system activation is very necessary for our immunity, but unnecessary or unrestricted complement system activation is very harmful to our body it may produce different kind of disease so unnecessary complement system activation should be regulated let's talk about how the complement system activation can be regulated first the classic pathway regulation or classic pathway inhibition This pathway is inhibited by C1 inhibitor. Let's recapitulate the classic pathway. Suppose it is a gram negative bacteria and antigen on their surface. An antibody IgM and IgG bind with this antigen. After binding the antibody with this antigen, the FC portion of the antibody undergo conformational changes. Some conformational changes so that it can bind complement protein C1. And then C1 can bind to C4 and C4 become fragmented C4B and C4A then C2B and C2A then C4B and C2B activate C3B C3 and form C3B and C3A then three of them act as C5 converters and act on C5 and C5 become fragmented C5B and C5A thus they produce C6 C7 C8 and C9 they are the membrane attack complex. This is the classical pathway. But if there is no antigen, suppose this is the antibody. Antibody IgM or IgG. It has found no antigen to bind with. This is the antigen binding fraction and this is the FC portion FC portion can bind to complement protein in the blood there are so many C1 inhibitor sufficient amount of C1 inhibitor Normally, when there is no pathogen to bind with this antibody, the C1 inhibitor come over here and bind to the FC for portion. And block the FC portion so that further it cannot bind to the C1. Ultimately, the complement system activation is stopped here or the complement system activation not start at all so we can say that c1 inhibitor act on the antibody without the presence of antigen or bacteria whenever the antibody bind with the antigen or any type of bacteria the C1 complement protein take the upper hand and bind to the FC portion of the antibody 
and the C1 inhibitor lost from here. So this is the classic pathway inhibition by the C1 inhibitor which is normally present in our body sufficiently. But in case when C1 inhibitor are insufficient in the body or hereditary insufficiency or deficiency of C1 inhibitor can cause hereditary angioedema because if there is no C1 inhibitor in the body, the antibody without the presence of antigen or bacteria, it can activate complement protein and produce C5A and C3A. They are the vasoactive substances. Because it causes increase capillary permeability it causes edema of the different organ among them the laryngeal edema is very fatal because it causes death Thus, the oral disease is called hereditary angioedema. Angioedema. Now, alternative pathway regulation. Let's recap the alternative pathway. Suppose this is a pathogen contain lipopolysaccharide on their membrane or gram negative bacteria contain endotoxin and this will bind with the C3B then BB Then both of them activate C3 and fragment it into C3B and C3A. Then three of them act as C5 convertase and act on C5 and divide it into C5B and C5A then C5B act on C6 and produce C6B and C6-7 then C7 and C8 and then C9 these are the membrane complex but what will happen if we want to regulate this pathway now the regulation Suppose it is the pathogen containing lipopolysaccharide and it is the C free B then B B then C free B. Now what will happen? Another factor present on blood called factor H bind with C three B. And form a complex then the another factor called factor I come over here and cleave this complex and destroy them so the main component the C3B of complement system activation will be reduced so that as C3B is reduced or declined at this step, the further progress of complement system activation 
cannot go ahead so thus the i and a specter regulate the complement system activation and these are present on blood normally another type of regulation is mediated by decay exhilarating factor and cd59 both of them are protein now let's know how they regulate complement system activation the complement system is for defense against pathogen but we have to protect our own cell right like, like red blood cell platelet leukocyte from complement system attack so we have to protect our own cell from complement system activation this mechanism for our own cell protect from complement protein so suppose it is our red blood cell or any other type of cells this is the plasma membrane this plasma membrane has anchor and this anchor are gpi or glycophosphatidyl anchor glycophosphatidyl this this plasma membrane contain anchor called gpi and this anchor bind with decay exhilarating factor or we can say daf anchor bind with this protein daf and cd9 normal cells contain this component now what this component do daf inhibit c3 convertase this and CD59 inhibit formation of membrane attack complex or MAC as C3 converters absent membrane attack complex cannot form how can complement system activate so by this mechanism our own cells like red blood cell platelet leukocyte protect themselves now what will happen if this anchor protein are absent hereditary if this anchor protein means gpi are absent on plasma membrane it leads to a disease called par nocturnal hemoglobinuria now what is the disease it is a disease characterized by episodes of brownish urine this brownish urine what is the reason cause of hemolysis if this anchor are absent how can daf or dk exhilarating factor or cd59 can bind and as they can't bind so the complement system can activate in our normal cells like red blood cell and if red blood cells are attacked by complement system the red blood cell undergo hemolysis so the urine become brown so the cause of brownish urine is hemolysis that's all about the regulation of complement system activation